Thanks, Kristen. Um, yeah, I just feel like my show is just an opportunity to really extend this incredible gift that I've received from using um, these mind tools in the last six years of um, being a part of Living Miracles. And yeah, I just uh, was driving over here to the studio and I had this really incredible feeling of gratitude for um, this feeling that comes up, you know, after I've moved through some sort of an upset and really a, a, a feeling of a deeper connection with the spirit and, and a deeper connection with my brothers. And um, last Wednesday, uh, I did a uh, spirit session with, uh, with the community over at La Casa de Milagros and uh, actually had somebody in the community come up to the front of the room and we went through a, a spiri session together and it was very deep uh, for me anyway and uh, there was this point in the whole um, conversation the dialogue where I really felt like my interest and his interests were not different were not separate and it was just such a, a delicious feeling you know like wow <laughs> I didn't see his issue or problem any different from me. And there was like this merge and, and then afterwards, just even a, a deeper feeling of closeness that it seemed like everybody was experiencing in the room, like it was a, a shared healing experience. So, so that's my prayer for, for this show. And, and I, and in saying that I wanted to do this, I really was wanting to have like an, sort of interactive um, session where somebody that has a, a, an upset in the mind would be willing to um, like be transparent and step forward and, and go through a spiri session together. And in that way, all of us can see, you know, how is it that we can really utilize, fully utilize these tools? What is it that are common kind of obstacles that people may have to using these tools and and how can we overcome them you know together by looking at you know the different levels of the mind together um, and moving through those together to the healing at the end you know to see that there must be something else that we're wanting other than the peace of God and you know and making a choice at that point of whether or not we want to hold on to that desire or we want to um, choose for peace so yeah, at this time, I'd just like to see just by a show of hand if there's anybody here uh, online that would like to go through a Spiri session together. So I see uh, there's Mary. I, she has her hand up. So Mary, how are you? I'm great. Um, I'm very grateful to be here. And um, I'm so moved by the sharing, uh, the transparency and the spontaneity of, um, you know, everyone who spoke this morning, uh, Andy and Nicholas, um, Ken and Anna. So um, my issue is that um, I have gotten into a habit of uh, waking up at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, I actually have been doing this for some years. Um, and uh, it seems that my ego voice is just screaming in my mind and um i'm half awake half asleep uh and it's all sorts of thoughts are coming up and so i have tried various um to use various tools to work through this and uh and now it's moved into a fear that um i you know ego is stronger <laughs> <laughs> then spirit's voice uh, uh, and and I almost go to bed with a fear that I'm going to wake up at four o'clock in the morning um, and so uh, <laughs> I have spirited this a couple of times um, and uh, I would like to do it again with you okay that sounds beautiful so Again, this is a great one to take through Spiri together if you've tried to do it on your own. So even in joining in this way. So the unhappiness is uh, when you think about waking up at 4, 4 a.m. in the morning. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. 
So is this something that's happened in the fu- in the past or might happen in the future or both? Both. Okay. So that's a yes. Yes. Okay. So can you describe the feelings that come up for you when you wake up at four in the morning? Panic, overwhelm, helplessness, fear. Helplessness instead of hopelessness there, Nicholas. Anything else, Mary? Um, let's go with that. Okay. So is there someone or something to blame for waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning? Well, what I'm good at, what my ego mind is good at is blaming myself. Every time I've done Spiri, I've not blamed anybody else, but I blame myself. Okay, we'll go with that then. Is there something you're afraid is going to happen because of waking up at four in the morning? What I'm afraid is going to happen is that um, I will lose sleep, that I, uh, uh, you might say on the surface level, uh, I'll lose sleep, I'll be groggy in the morning, I won't be motivated to um, uh, be present in my day. Um, And at a deeper level, it seems to go to a core belief, um, a couple of core beliefs. One is self-hatred. Um, so, so just, I'm going to just have you slow down there, Mary. So we'll just, what I heard you say about the fear is that you're going to be tired the next day. Yes. Is that fear? Okay. Yes. Okay, Nicholas, that's fine. We can just move on from there. Thank you, Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to summarize, when you think about waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning, you feel panic, overwhelm, helplessness, fear. Uh, you blame yourself and you're afraid that I will be tired the next day. Is this summary correct? Yes, and it's it goes deeper. I'm afraid that God isn't really there for me. Okay, so let's just go ahead and go with the 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 fear initially is that you're going to be tired, and then we're going to move now into the belief part of it. So it seems like you already are. Uh, there are several beliefs that this is bringing up for you, so we can go into that in this section. So. All of this proves you're right about a negative belief you have about yourself, others, or the world. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So when you think about waking up at four in the morning, what negative belief feels true to you? And you've already started talking about some of them. So why don't you go ahead and just go back through the list that you have already come up with. Okay. That God is not there for me. Uh, Before we put them down, Nicholas, let, let me just hear everything that you have, that you've already been exploring, Mary, in terms of beliefs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, That there's unworthiness. How so? Um, that I'm, 
that I'm not worthy to hear the voice of God. How does that, how do you make the connection between the, the waking up at four and the not hearing the, the voice or hear or feeling a connection? Well, I feel like I should know better that I should be able to overcome this. And I realize to some degree that that's coming from my ego. And I think it's a resistance. It's a huge resistance to letting go of my own, you know, determination to do it by myself. So talk about what else comes up for you with this 4 a.m. Because it sounds like there's you've had it happen quite a bit and there's many beliefs is there anything else besides what you've just described? Fear that I, that in spite of the work I do and my devotion, that I'm not going to break through this. Um, a sense of hopelessness and um, powerlessness. Hmm. It's like I should know better. I, I know the tools. I have stuff beside my bed. This wonderful um, morning prayer that, that Kirsten uh, uh, posted, I read, but somehow I'm still waking up. And it's like um, I can't seem to break through it. And it feels like it's... Um, it's part of the dismantling. I mean, I can intellectualize it, but um, it feels like it's got me. And uh, to varying degrees, it's a little bit different every morning. But um, there's this fear and level of anxiety. Mm. Does it happen every single morning? Yes, almost. Uh -huh. And um, do you have to work during the day or is there some reason that you have to be up early? after this, when you wake up at 4 a.m.? I'm fairly newly retired um, for, for about two years now. So no, I do not have to get up and go to work the next day. Mm. Mm. So when you, what do you do when you wake up at 4 a.m.? What is your kind of, do you just lay there and toss and turn or are you up or what, what, what happens when you wake up at 4 a.m.? I, um, I go into prayer. I think it was Nicholas was talking earlier. I uh, can't remember who about this kind of coming from a place of desperation. God, please help me. Uh, Jesus, please help me. Um, so I'm, and I, I will sometimes go over a lesson and, and, uh, and, uh, you know, have a desire to be in that silent space. Um, however, and sometimes that works. Um, at just learning to still my mind, uh, <laughs> major, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. And, and sometimes I toss and turn, even though I'm doing these things always, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm praying or I'm, I'm going over a lesson in the course. Um, sometimes I toss and turn and sometimes I'm able to, uh, accept what is there, open to it, and relax, and let it all go, and go back to sleep. So, so what are your inspirations, and what are the things that, um, that really, like, spark you, just in terms of maybe your spiritual path, Course in Miracles, you know, now that you're retired, like, what do you, what, what is your inspiration? Like, what, what is your joy? Can you, when, when you're doing these certain things, you feel like you, you lose track of time and space and self. And are there any places that you have or things that, um, that you do that, that give you that feeling? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, the course, I've been a student of the course for many years. Um, uh, however, it's been a self a self study course for me, and I have felt um, I started the course in the mid '80s, and there have been various times when I've been able to connect with others. But for the most part, it's been fairly. Um, there's not been that joining um, with others. So the joining 
I mean, these right now online, and I've, I've done, uh, what, three out of four, and I'm signed up for the next online retreat this joining the uh, and I remember Andy I'm going to call you out here <laughs> in, in a good way in a good way and, um but Andy had posted something online on 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 one of the Facebook pages and I just immediately responded he had just posted it and uh I'm like wow that really so resonates with me thank you for posting that and right after I posted that I just had this overwhelming heart burst of energy. So I'm like on the keyboard, Andy, was that you? <laughs> he said, yes. And I'm like, oh, thank you. That was so beautiful. <laughs> so it, uh, it's just another, another, another um, testimony to that connection to that oneness. And when I get in touch with that, then all the rest of it disappears. Um, however, for some reason, um, there's this, thing going on that um, I, I can't seem to let go of. Right. So I just wanted to, just based on everything that you've said and um, just that you've tried some different spirits and mind tools to, to move through this, like even introducing this thought in the mind that you need a certain amount of time to sleep every night mm -hmm. in order to be happy. Does mm -hmm. that does that resonate with you? Like, do you feel, have you been raised in that way that you think you need to have a certain amount of time to sleep every night in I order realized, to have, excuse me. Yeah. I realize oh. it's fairly body oriented, but it is also a belief um, because, uh, you know, I've been a doer, blah, blah, blah. And I've always been very active. Um, so it's like, now I'm like, I'm retired nine hours of sleep. I need, and so I look at my body, and when I get more sleep, I feel so much better. Right. Yes. Oh, it's a belief. Yeah. That. Say that again, that last part. A belief in the need for a certain number of hours of sleep based on yeah. my, how, my, how I feel during the day, the, based on how my body feels. It's body. Yeah. What can I say? Yeah. <laughs> Right. And I know that you've done the mind tools because you've said that you've used them a lot. And one of the things that it, you know, we, we think that what's happening to us out on the perceptual screen is, you know, it's happening to us. You know, we don't get enough sleep and then we're feeling tired and groggy and we can't really function. But, you know, what the course is telling us and, you know, what the levels of mind is showing us is that it's actually there's a belief in the mind that's generating you know, these, these thoughts and these feelings and then a perception that it seems to be about, you know, not getting enough sleep and waking up early, you know, waking up at 4 a.m. and then feeling like that's the reason why you feel the way that you do. But, you know, it's like this invitation of, okay, there seems to be a, a deeply rooted belief uh, in that. And I, I mean, I can say that growing up that I've had that same thing, you know, well, I need to have eight hours of sleep or at least seven hours of sleep to be able to uh, function well the next day, but it keeps like sort of getting questioned or, or being brought up for, for question. And uh, David's sitting here in the aud audience here at the studio, and, and he's just reminding me of this movie that we have in our MWGE collection called passengers where uh, the main character she's a, a, a the woman is like so she is it basically going to another planet and she's been put to sleep uh, for like 30 years and and somebody wakes her up early you know so she has another whatever 28 years to go and she's so angry that this person has woke her up from you know this 30 year sleep, you know, it's like, how dare you, you know, how dare you do this to me, you know, and so there's this incredible anger. And even in your situation, it's like, wow, I, I see that there is such a attachment to this belief of that I, I need to have a certain amount of sleep that I need to be able to, you know, sleep through the night into whatever the morning to be able to, to be happy. So so this is a good one for us to all look at together, actually. And I'll just have Nicholas take us back to the um, the uh, Spiri session so that we can look at this belief. And I'm just going to um, introduce a possibility that the, the, the belief is that I, I need um, 
to get uh, more sleep in the night. Okay. So, so Mary, how many hours do you think you need? Eight. Okay. I need eight hours of sleep a night. Okay, we can just click on yes there, Nicholas. It's just summarizing what the negative belief is that we are looking at. So Mary, since you don't like the way you feel, are you ready to consider the possibility that the way you perceive this upset is not the way it really is? Yes, most definitely. Okay. So everything works together for your good, yes. Mary. Yes. You you only feel um, panic, overwhelm, and helplessness and fear because because blaming yourself and fearing that I will be tired the next day mirror back to your mind the belief that I need eight hours of sleep at night, which you have denied from your awareness, and that's why you need your mighty companions to help help you sometimes. <laughs> Yes, thank you. So are you willing to look at waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning from a different perspective? <sighs> yes, I am. Mm. That's good that you had a, a hesitancy there. You want to make sure that, that your yeses are yeses and your noes are noes. <laughs> <laughs> So, so through the ego's distorted lens, you believe the cause and resolution of this upset are outside of you. Yes. Meaning you feel like you need to sleep longer. This is a mind trick and only the ego's attempt to distract you from looking within your own mind. Hmm. Yeah. Do you want to learn that there's a way that you can, without guilt, see the part you play in all of this so that you can do something about it? We, and Nicholas highlighted without guilt so you can see that it isn't to make you feel guilty about it. Oh, that would be great. That would be awesome. Okay. Without guilt, okay. Without guilt it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, glad to hear that. <laughs> Now I'm going to let you in on a little secret that can change everything for you. You think waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning is why you feel panic, overwhelm, helplessness, and fear, but it's really because you're believing something that isn't true. Mm. Yes. Um, the belief that I need eight hours of sleep at night isn't true. This is what Spiri is asking you to open up to, because if you can actually get in touch with the fact that it's the belief that's generating the, the feelings, you know, it's really, it's the game changer. So yeah. believing I need eight hours of sleep at night is the real reason you feel panic, overwhelm, helplessness, fear, when you think about waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, I noticed that there's some resistance to that, um, and so I'd like to speak it. Yes. Okay. Um, it, it, almost, <laughs> it almost seems too simple that, that <laughs> my panic, I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> it almost seems too simple <laughs> that um, all of this panic and overwhelm and freaking out at 4 o'clock in the morning <laughs> Is based on some blankety blank belief. That, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, everybody. Uh, that that I need eight hours of sleep. It's like she did about this. 
that, that, that that's Keep too going. simple. Okay, so, <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm willing. I'm willing to be open to this. <laughs> <laughs> David's here saying that uh, uh, Kirsten had tons of beliefs around this this same thing that you're bringing up around this need for a certain amount of sleep or needing to sleep. And so there's just tons, uh, you know, in the mind, tons of beliefs in the mind about this very thing. And, and you know, it's like even getting in touch with who is it that is there saying, you you're so stupid, didn't, you know, this is such a simple thing, you know, who's saying that, <laughs> you know, because a lot of people have this belief, actually, and it's so good that you're willing to, like, bring it up with the group here today so that we can all look at it together and move through it together. Mm. Well, thank you. Yeah, we're, we're on our way, we've just passed third, and we're on our way home, <laughs> 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 using baseball terminology. So we can just continue because sometimes when we just get in touch with what you've just got in touch with Mary, it's like allowing this processing of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just a, a cup. You've just been a belief has just been flipped. So now it's just a bit of disorientation. Yeah. So feeling panic, overwhelm, helplessness, and fear seems valuable and justifiable when waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning <laughs> isn't what you wanted. Yes. So, so what is it that you wanted instead? I want to <laughs> sleep through the night. I want peace of mind. Okay, I sleep through the night. We can <laughs> we'll go through that. Just sleep through the night. Because <laughs> that's really what we what you want, you know, in this scenario. Okay. So here's what's really going on. We're going to just summarize. If you believe that you need eight hours of sleep at night, you'll naturally want to sleep through the night <laughs> to be happy and at peace. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge expectation here. So um, yes, it's correct. Just uh, summarizing the desire here. Okay, and just basically a high five, Mary, for going through this session together. And then given what you know now, Mary, uh, do you want to hold on to this desire to sleep through the night or do you want to choose peace of mind? And there's no wrong answers, really. Oh, yeah, I've been through it before. I'm just looking deep. Mary, you know, do you really want peace of mind or what are you doing here? <laughs> so I'm just looking. Uh, uh, we need that game show music. Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, yeah, Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that what comes up uh, I, and I, if I'm taking too much time let me know what comes up is that um, you know if I let this go then I have to really let go of my resistance mm -hmm. and uh, there's a part of me that's screaming and kicking and yelling no yeah. you know I want to hang on to this and then there's another part of me that's that's like a flood when I let go of that, and therefore, everything flips. Right. Yeah. So just even if you want, if, you know, no pressure of making a decision around that now, but if, if you wanted to, at this point, just click on Keep Desire, there's some beautiful videos that will uh, come up for you to actually look at and um, to, you know, really go deeper in why you want to keep the desire, you know, because uh, you've probably had it, you know, for lifetimes. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a very deeply rooted belief in sleep. And now it's being, you know, you're being asked um, to whether or not you want to let it go. I just got a, an email because people can give feedback on Spiri. And uh, this email that I got from somebody at the end of their session was the question of, you know, 
she wanted a partner and she, she sent the feedback, well, I want a partner, you know, so did she want peace of mind or did she want a partner? <laughs> she wants a partner. So it's like, okay, at least, you know, now what it is that, you know, you're being asked to, to let go of if you really want peace of mind, you know, but it's like the spirit's just going to wait, you know, until, till you're ready. Yeah. Well, like it feels like everything's kind of moving around. It's almost as if I don't want to speak it right now. I want to be with it because, and I'll take some quiet time um, because it is shifting. And so that's awesome. Thank you. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing your process with us, Mary. I mean, really, this is very deep work that we're doing together. And, you know, you just remembering that you're not in this alone. Like yeah. we're all praying for you, you know, whatever your decision is that, you know, that this is your call of your heart is, is what's, what this feeling is. And the ego is going to kick and scream every step of the way. <laughs> yep. So. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.